Hello and welcome everyone to the first ever Leaders Facebook Live Forum. I'm Councillor Patrick Harley, Leader of the Council, and with me is Councillor David Vickers, Deputy Leader of the Council, who will be chatting with me about your questions and hopefully providing you with some useful answers. This is the first time we've attempted to do anything like this on Facebook Live. So we'll see how it goes. In Dudley, we do try to lead the way when it comes to listening to local people and engaging with them. This is very much about listening to you and how we can help you. Just a couple of housekeeping points before we start. Please be polite. We're here to help you. Please be patient while we get round to answering as many of your questions as possible. And if you have any questions, please type them into the comments box so that we can see them and then we'll discuss those as they come in. It really is over to you. Well, first of all, uh, Patrick, we've got a, mm -hmm. a question from Mick Freer. Okay. He said, will you please ask Patrick Harley whether his council will protect the current Greenbelt boundaries? Dudley has sufficient urban land for its needs up to 2036, but our planners are bringing forward proposals that threaten our countryside with housing and industry to support deficiencies in Sandwell, Warsaw, Wolverhampton and Birmingham. Surely they should be looking after their own deficiencies. Okay, very good question. A lot of detail in there and I'll try to answer it as uh, precise and as open and honestly as I can. Uh, there is a consultation process going on currently and the reason for that is that for pe we want people like Mick Freer and his uh, very well organised uh, campaign group to get in touch to notify the council and council officers to tell us exactly where they want us to build and, more importantly, for Mick's case, where they don't want us to build. And that's what this consultation process is about. Yeah. That when we've identified where there are areas that are clearly hands-off, then we can use our political influ influence within this authority to try and retain as much, if not all, of that green belt as possible. I don't think there's an elected member out of the 72 of us in Dudley that would freely give up our beloved green belt. I think in Dudley, in all four constituencies, there is a lot of green belt that is very cherished and very well used by all of our residents. And I know I'm sitting next to a housing councillor who would, uh, I think, walk over barefoot over Broughton Glass to try and protect his green belt. That's certainly true. Uh, most of what Mick's talking about is in my ward. Mm. Um, and it is beloved by many people in Hales Owen. And further afield. While well, we're waiting for any more questions to come in, perhaps you could talk to us about free parking, Patrick. And OK. They... Very quickly, we'll wait for the next question. On, on free car parking, it's been well publicised that we're about to launch one hour's free car parking on all council, Dudley Council on car parks. Obviously, there was a trial for two hours of free car parking in three of the uh, town centres. Uh, we've reduced that to one hour, basically because we ha also had a commitment to invest in nearly half a million pounds in green care services. Yes. That service deals with the ever-growing problem of weeds that have massively gone out of control because budgets were cut in previous years. We want to put that right. We can't, at this moment in time, afford to introduce two hours free car parking and deal with the weeds problem. So by investing £1 million and splitting that cost between those two key priorities, hopefully we can deal with both issues. So we are delivering on free car parking and also dealing with the ever-growing problem of weeds in the borough. But there is a commitment from the Conservative group to introduce two hours free car parking as and when we can afford it. Good. I think that will go down well with people locally, certainly. Um, the combined mayor, Andy Street, he visited us last mm -hmm. week. Um, th I thought that went well. Yes. It's not every day that you have uh, an elected mayor come to the borough, hopefully to lobby government and the command authority yes. for a good share of investment. It's one of the biggest single amounts that we've ever lobbied for to be invested in the borough. £41 million, I think it will totally transform Dudley Town Centre. Whereas people have said before that our best days are behind us in Dudley, I think if we get this investment and get that regeneration uh, invested in and applied and built, that includes the, getting the metro to Dudley and beyond to Briley Hill. It includes a new bus interchange to replace the dilapidated and very antiquated bus station that we've currently got. Yep. 
It includes more investment on Castle Hill with the Zoo and Black Country Museum and the Canal Trust. It includes finally getting rid of Cavendish House. And I think we can all celebrate when that horrible building finally gets demolished and comes down. And it means a lot of investment in retail, residential and leisure facilities in that particular part of town. And mm -hmm. I think all those combined will really transform Dudley Town Centre. And it'll mean that our best days aren't behind us, our best days are ahead of us. Certainly people would say that the town is going downhill, uh, and I think that would probably pick it up nicely. It would pick it up very nicely. Uh, you know, people continually look to blame Merry Hill. You know, Merry Hill is not the only reason Dudley Town Centre has uh, de declined in recent years. Yes. A lot of town centres have declined in recent years. What we have to do is have the imagination and the resource to redesign our town centres. That means putting more residential properties in them. So the retail becomes a little bit smaller. So you have more people living in the town. If you've got more people residing in the town centres, then you've got more people to actually enjoy the retail and leisure facilities that we have to offer. Certainly we're doing that in Hale's Own at the current, the current time. The redundant old council uh, buildings in the town centre, right in the town centre, have just passed through planning to mm -hmm. make them into 26 apartments. So that would be good for that part yes. of the town. When they've had a building that the council own has been empty for some time and getting dilapidated and the developer wants to do something with it. But I think that's great. That's a really positive news story. Yeah. Um, we've uh, touched on the green, uh, green care <coughs> and weeds mm -hmm. um, for some time that they've been neglected in the borough. Is there anything else you'd like to say on that one at all? I just think that it's... <laughs> As council leader, I want to, and as a, as a local Dudley resident, I've lived here all my life. Uh, I enjoy living in Dudley, I enjoy working in Dudley, but we have to make sure that our borough is a nice place to live, that it looks nice, that it doesn't, we haven't got eyesores. And when we've got weeds growing so tall that they obscure street signs, then it, enough is enough, we have to yes. take a stand, make that investment, and it, it's a huge investment that we're putting back into green care, and I think that come next March, residents will see a real difference where their neighbourhoods look a lot tidier than they do now. One thing that the borough has always done well is um, outside uh, shows like the Himley mm -hmm. uh, bonfire. Is that going ahead this year? Himley bonfire will go ahead as planned this year. It is, the, I think, it's the, one of the largest council run, if not the largest in the country. Uh, always very welcomed by families and uh, it'll go on as planned this year. Good. Well, a question just coming from Alan Stevens. <coughs> Why are traders allowed to take up most of the pavement outside their shops? They should be rated on space occupied by their sale items, not just on the premises the town might look better and more wheelchair friendly, if that was the case. If, if there are traders out there that are causing obstruction so you can't get prams, pushchairs and wheelchairs through, then that is an issue. And that's one that if uh, the gentleman privately messages us, then we'll take up that up with the uh, relevant uh, planning and enforcement officers within the authority. Yes, that's, I think that is something that we can do quite easily. Um, and he's, he can do it himself, of course, by, mm, yeah. by writing into council for us, but if, texting. If, if he wants or, to private message us later, yeah, uh, then we're we quite happy to pick that up. Yeah. Um, the new Dudley Museum, I was around there the other day. Mm -hmm. um, what did you think of that? Well, I, I've got to confess, I've not actually been there. I've been too busy to go over there. Uh, I'm due to go over there Saturday when uh, Jordan... Jordan uh, there's my, put my teeth in here. Jordan. Jordan. I can't Wild, see Wild, yes. Wild, yep. Yeah, very, very talented uh, tennis player. Got yep. the freedom of the borough yep. last year. Uh, she's uh, performing the opening ceremony on, on, is, on yes. the weekend. So I shall go along to that and get my first view of this new museum. Uh, I sat on the overview and scrutiny board that deliberated whether we should actually close the old museum. Uh, clearly, when it was first presented, it was presented as a budget cut, and it was nothing of the sort once we deliberated and, and uh, scrutinised that decision. What it was, it was a regeneration project, which was trying to breathe new life into the town centre by using the old museum building mm. to allocate council staff, quite yes. a substantial number, those council staff, once they're moved from where they are now, will be working in the town centre, 
they'll be shopping and spending their lunch times within that town centre. So that brings more footfall. And the new museum is, is purpose built, it's fit for the 21st century, it has wheelchair and disabled access, which the old museum clearly didn't. The exhibits are clearly in better display cases, there, there's more on show. There are areas where school children can take part in little experiments on geology and things like that. So it's a, it's a far better establishment yes. than what we had previously. I noticed when we went round the other day with the mayor um, that uh, they'd got actually a Turner painting on display mm. that the council have got um, and has been hidden away in various places. And that's a superb little, only a little painting. Yeah. But Turner is a big, big pull for, yes. for artists. And I think that <coughs> it's nice to see those on display alongside some of the more prehistoric items that hmm. we have. Yes. The Dudley Bug. Um, You're not talking about Dudley Councillors then? No, we're not talking about Dudley Councillors. We're talking about the famed Dudley Bug, which is um, worldwide. Uh, don't ask me to spell the, the, to say the, the proper Latin name for it, because I couldn't <laughs> even attempt to. But it's something that we could do. Just, just on that point, on uh, exhibiting some of our hidden treasures, our art, etc. When the new Glass Museum opens, I uh, had a visit there a couple of months ago. Uh, it's still in its development stages, and it's yes. not due to be open for a, 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 for a little while yet. Uh, but what they're planning to do there is try and display as much of the glass as possible. Uh, and I think there's scope there to display probably other art treasures that perhaps just get hidden away. Uh, so I think uh, we, we've, we've got a lot to look forward to as regards art and museums in Dudley. I think this new establishment uh, down the road by the Black Country Museum is much welcome. And of course we have to welcome the opening soon of the Glass Museum in Worsley. OK, there's one uh, question now coming from okay. Henry Sanford. The town has always been going downhill. Every promise to improve any of the Buddhist <coughs> towns becomes a false promise. Mm -hmm. Starbridge stores are closing quicker than they are coming in. All low-grade stores. Okay, what would the question there be? Um, that we are full of empty promises, I would think. Okay. Let, let me tackle that one head on. Um, there have been announcements in the past by politicians of, of, of all political parties, be they in Dudley or on a national level or in other towns and cities. With this investment, specifically the £41 million where we invited Andy Street to Dudley last week. Mm -hmm. This money it, it is a serious bid. There are planning applications that have gone in. There, is, there are groundworks already happening with the Metro. They're on the Sandwall side of the tracks, but the groundworks are already being prepared. Engineers are already working to try and identify those best routes, and that, that preliminary work is already happening. So the Metro, that, that rail connectivity, that we have so longed for for so many years in Dudley, that connectivity is coming. That is going to be a reality. Yes. With that, the planning application to demolish Cavendish House and replace that whole area with a mix of residential, leisure and retail, that is a real planning application. The applicant is going to have to spend £100,000 just on the planning application itself. People do not spend £100,000 on a planning application if they are not serious about putting some real serious investment into our town centre. So I understand the, the gentleman's frustrations on broken promises from the past, but this investment and this uh, redevelopment of the town centre is real and it's going to happen, and it's going to happen very, very soon. This, one is, um, this question is from Richard Tasker. Mm -hmm. He says he's a candidate for Castle and Priory, and I'm committed to helping the elderly with commitment from the Conservative Council in adult social care. What have residents in my area got to look forward to? Well, I think what you have to look forward to is we've had a recent announcement of seven point, almost £7.4 million from the government to invest in adult social care. Uh, I think we have a good team in Dudley, regardless of who's running the council, I think the officer team in adult social care do an absolutely brilliant job in trying to manage the resources that they have. Having said that, over £7 million worth of new money, new investment, uh, you, you can't sniff at that. And what the officers and the cabinet member have planned for that, 
I think will transform the way we deal with adult social care, in particular trying to free up some of the bed blocking, which is so expensive, it's a drain on hospital resources, it's a drain on the CCG, and it's yes. definitely a drain on the local authorities' resources. If we can eliminate that problem and try and make it better, then long term we will save an absolute small fortune, which then we can reinvest in that adult social care. But the adult social care budget in Dudley, it, it, it is protected. There is a, a, a council tax precept that goes specifically to adult social care. And along with the £7.4 million that the government's given us, then I think you know, we have the resources at last, if we allocate them sensibly, to deal with this long-term problem of how we look after our elderly, yes. uh, as they clearly deserve to be looked after, and not pay lip service to it as other councils have in the past. And, that, and that's not a slur on one administration or another, but budgets have been cut under both administrations in the past. I think there is a nationally recognised issue now with how we look after our elderly. The issues of dementia and, 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 and people having those mental health issues is a growing problem. My own uh, mother suffers from dementia. Uh, and it is heartbreaking to see a loved one change in front of you. Uh, she yeah. has residential care at last. Yeah. Uh, as a family, we've tried to cope. We clearly couldn't. And we've had to take the uh, un unfortunate step and unwanted step of placing mum in residential care. And I know that's an issue that many, many other residents of Dudley have to face every day. So when I talk about the, the, the harsher and harder side of adult social care, I know what people are experiencing because yeah. myself and my family have gone through it too. And, and my own as well. Um, and, and it isn't a pleasant thing to it's do. Not, not, at all. Not, not at all. We've got a question come in from Caroline, Caroline Lenahan. Mm -hmm. Do you still consider Dudley Council a community council? If so, how do you plan to encourage community involvement and getting people involved in things such as decision making moving forward? I, I think the phrase community council... It, it can be often used as one of those throwaway remarks. Uh, I think the proof in the pudding of whether you really are a community council, whether you listen to your residents, whether you listen to your communities, it's about getting in there, getting to know the people who elect you, doing the job you're elected to do, taking on board as many views as you can, but actually involving them. Well, we've just had a consultation exercise on whether we change the way we elect our councillors. I make no secret of the fact that I would prefer to have elections once every four years. It would save a million pounds over four years. I think it would encourage voter turnout because people could vote for real change instead of just changing a third of the councillors once every 12 months. But that consultation process came back with the result that was different to what I wanted. But as a council leader and someone who does value the meaning of the word community. Yes. If you're going to consult with the community, then you have to listen to them. Of course. Them. Of course you and, do. Uh, you know, we've had administrations in the past who have consulted. It's been a haphazard con consultation, and they've gone the opposite way to the way the consultation process has gone. So if you are a real community council, then if you do consult with that community, for goodness sake, listen to them. Community council is a bit of a strap line, really, isn't it? You it can is. call it anything you want. The, the proof of the pudding is getting out there, working with the community, listening to what they want. They, they clearly want free car parking. They freely, clearly want their streets and roads to be clear of weeds and litter. And those are just two measures in which we've listened and we're delivering. Good. Now, the question just come in from uh, Catherine Duffy. Mm -hmm. As a rent payer, I would like to know when some money is going to put into housing repairs. I am sick of hearing there is no money in the pot. Okay. Uh, this is where I have to uh, defend the previous administration. Uh, I think in last year's budget, I think more money was allocated to housing repairs than ever before. It's a substantial amount, and we will continue that good work. Yeah. I think the frustration, frustration for council tenants is that when it comes to their own property... There's obviously a, a, an endless list of repairs that need to be done, and if it, you're on that list, obviously you want your repairs done there, and then you don't want to wait. Uh, there are also concerns with sort of the quality of those repairs, uh, and, and if the, the lady has specific issues, and again, if she messages us later with those specific issues of whether work has been done or not, uh, if she contacts us, then uh, we'll try and move that along for her. But I think... Under both administrations, a lot, a lot of investment has been ploughed into council house repairs. 
Uh, and what the authority are now doing, they're looking at social housing from a different aspect instead of ploughing endless money into properties that would cost us a small fortune to bring up just to an almost acceptable standard. We're now declaring some of those properties surplus to requirements. We're, we're, we're selling them on. And I think in the last couple of months, we've raised £2 million by getting rid of those surplus properties, which we would never hope to recover the cost of re re repairing them or getting back the money that we've lost on, yeah. on rents. By getting that £2 million in, we can reinvest that into more repairs, into replenishing some of the council house stock. So I think, to be, to be fair, I think, I think the, the, the criticism is unjust. I think the money is there to invest in council house repairs. It ha was under the previous administration. It will continue to be under ours. OK, thank you very much for that. Yeah. Wendy Morris mm -hmm. uh, has written in to say, Dudley Council spent millions to revamp the marketplace, only to see it go downhill. It is dirty. Shops shut everywhere. Surely the council should spend t their time working on policing, social care and education, etc. Well, I think the council should allocate uh, a fair percentage of its budget looking at uh, the security of its uh, residents and, of course, also on social care. We've just discussed social care, an extra £7.4 mm -hmm. million, pounds, plus the council tax precepts. So I think we're doing what we need to do on adult social care and on, on, on children's social care too. Uh, but of course we have to look after other budgets as well and, and, and part of that is the environment. Yeah. Uh, it's pointless investing in every other facet of the council if you don't invest in, in your environment. And we need to have a clean environment that people are happy, proud uh, to, to live within. I don't want to live in a dirty town. So I think this extra investment into green care I think is much welcome. On the Dudley Town uh, market specifically, yes, a lot of money was invested in that. Uh, in hindsight, and again, and this stretches over the previous two administrations, was that investment wisely spent? Were the council, uh, did they pay over the odds for some of the things that had gone on in that marketplace? Probably they were, but hindsight's a wonderful thing. Uh, what we have now is a really good regen team in place, a, a, a good team on the council, who I think will try and link that marketplace. So we have new, uh, we have a new uh, management uh, team in place on that market. Uh, I think we had a relaunch a couple of weeks ago where every market stall was taken up. I come and walk through Dudley Town Centre quite right. often, yeah. and it, it is getting busier. Uh, I think there was a survey done a few months ago where it was found that there, there are less empty shops now in Dudley Town Centre than there were a couple of years ago. So things are clearly moving in the right direction. Are they moving as quick as we would like? That will never happen for me, and I'm sure many, many residents that are listening yeah. to this now. But we're trying to do what we can to revitalise our town centres. And it's not just about Dudley. It is about Stairbridge, as one listener's already alluded to. It is about Briley Hill. It's about Halzo. And it's about the smaller centres like King Springford, where I live. And where I live in King Springford, three years ago, there were at least 18 premises along Market Street, High Street, uh, Moss Grove, that were empty. Um, there are very few now, probably less than half a dozen premises that are empty in the town centre. That's a clear sign that the economy is picking up. And when it picks up and when retailers have confidence, then they will take a gamble on opening the store, on investing, on having longer opening hours, employing more staff and offering more services. But as, a, as an authority, uh, we have to try and supply that confidence to retailers to do those things. I think you're right. I think we've got a good team on the ground who do the street cleaning as well. I was talking to some of them at Briley Hill the other day, uh, and they are so well regarded by the local people that they were coming up and saying thank you mm. to him. Um, and I think that's good. I yeah. think that's good. That yeah. shows that they are doing the, the right work. Um, Gary Bolton. Mm -hmm. Any investment in the forgotten side of Dudley Cosley East? Ah, Cosley East, yes. Um, I believe that there is a planning application which has been deferred. I think it's on the old, I mean, forgive me if I get this wrong, but it's, I believe it's on the old Bean site, industrial site, yes. where there are up to 300 new homes. And again, it's one of these parks, which is a mixture of residential, retail and leisure. So off the yeah. top of my head, yes, there are plans to invest in Carlsley's. I think that particular development would absolutely revitalise that particular part of yes. Dudley. And, 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 and I can sympathise with, with, the, with, the, uh, with the gentleman, um, 
Colmsley has had its fair share of knocks in recent years. And I think this particular development on the old bean side, I think, would be a much-needed shot in the arm for that particular ward in Dudley. Good. Um, Rich Shipley mm -hmm. says, Fisher Street in Dudley by the bus station. We both know that well. This road is for taxis and buses only. Why aren't the council doing anything regarding the cars using this road and not being fined? This is a big bugbearer with one of our cabinet members from yeah, our own, is, own group yeah. uh, who's often complained about the same issue. Uh, steps are being taken to try and uh, improve the way we enforce those uh, traffic carving measures. Um, it is supposed to be simply for taxis and buses. Yeah. Clearly, uh, you get motorists who flout that to try and cut through. Uh, so we have spoken to the enforcement team and hopefully we can clamp down more strongly and severely than what we've done in the past. However, saying that, uh, when we get the new buzz interchange uh, put in there, that hopefully will resolve the problem once and for all. Yes, they'll have to change I, it. I, I might add as well, David, uh, there are plans not just to revamp and rebuild the current bus station into a buzz interchange, uh, but there are also plans to take on the old Iceland building, yes. which is a horrible, ugly building, really ugly, should yes. never have been built. It hides Birdcage Walk, it hides the statues that used to frighten the life out of me as a young child, because we were shopping in Dudley, <laughs> looking up at them, it was quite scary. Yeah, but they're uh, good, aren't they? But they will, be, once that building's gone, and we have the new buzz interchange, we'll have a lovely view of Birdcage Walk, which is prime uh, retail land, which we should show off more than what we do. Yes. You'll have the statues on show, which will be great, and you'll also have a very clear view of the castle, which, again, I don't think we make enough of as an authority. We don't. Um, when we were down there with the mayor, you could see the castle when the fog lifted. <laughs> yeah. It was beautiful. It really is a lovely sight, and obviously mm. the zoo is part of it, which is something that... Um, we've got uh, a lot of um, kudos in our area. We've got not only the zoo, the Black Country Museum, the archives, the museum itself, yeah. uh, and the Canal Trust, all closely together. And we've just opened the Travel Lodge Hotel in the mm. same area. Yeah. Uh, That's uh, got to be good for the town. There are very few authorities in the country, let alone in the Black Country and West Midlands, who have a castle, a zoo, Black Country Museum, and also the Canal and Riverboat Trust. Yeah. And they haven't always worked closely together. But they are now. And you can understand why, because they're all trying to redevelop their own mm -hmm. um, organisations and promote what's good for them. But now they're all working very closely together. Yeah. And I think that will absolutely enhance them and improve what they offer and provide. Certainly if we have something like the... Con um Commonwealth Games coming to the area mm -hmm. uh, and they want to stop somewhere. You've got the, this new hotel there, mm -hmm. which is already 90% yeah. occupied. I think there's 72 bedrooms, I think, we, yes. when we went around there. Um, and that's going to be ideally placed for people to, who've come to the, the Games to then look at the things we've got and take in the places where Peaky Blinder yeah. is, uh, is done and, and things like that. I, th I think that's a real big yeah, improvement yeah. in that area. Yeah, I think although, although Birmingham will obviously be the main beneficiary of the Commonwealth Games, there are, there are some advantages to the wider parts of the Combined Authority, yes. particularly in the Black Country. So yeah. hopefully we would pick up trade uh, from, from hotels, restaurants, sightseeing, because when people aren't watching the Games, they may want to taking the castle, the zoo, the canal trust or the Black Country Museum. I think we can certainly build on that by doing things, festivals, mm. uh, eat food festivals, yeah. and things like that. We've already got a beer festival in the town mm -hmm. that comes quite regularly. Um, we can build on, That's right. on that sort of area, yeah. make it a real thriving area. Um, Morgan Civita is mm -hmm. asking a question that we've already covered a little bit. Okay. What are you doing about Cavendish House? Okay, well, I think we've already alluded to that, the... Planning application will go in shortly from the developer. Once that application goes in, then I think very quickly we can get round to demolishing that building. We may even have a competition to see who can press the button. Yes, I think that would <laughs> be a good I'm idea. I'm sure there will be many council leaders, past and present, who would want to do that, but well, it, might, it may well be that we can open that up. up to charity Absolutely. and get, perhaps um, Morgan would like to come and yeah. press the button perhaps himself. He would. Perhaps he would. You never know. But I think until that building has gone, and it's, it, it's no longer ruining the landscape in Dudley, and I think people will quite rightly be sceptical 
of our regeneration plan. Yes, I think they would. Yeah. It's been too long. It's been empty now for 10 years, Yeah, probably. once that building's gone, yeah. then people will realise... It's a real eyesore. We're getting down to the serious business yeah. of investing in the borough, investing in Dudley Town Centre, yeah. and getting us moving again. It's quite a big area when we looked at it that there's going to be redeveloped yeah. there. And it's not going to be done quickly, no. um, but it, it will cover a, a big area of the town and boost right. the way people feel right. about the town. Andy Hale, mm -hmm. as an agreed partner council of the weekend's brilliant Birmingham Velo, uh -huh. which we all know about, yes. do you feel that the council did enough to give residents enough notice and advice on closed routes? What might you do next year? I think there's a wash-up exercise with officers and the organisers, I think, towards the end of this week. And I think uh, I'll be taking a keen interest on what they decided, what we did well, what we didn't do well. Yes. I think on a, on a, there's been a lot of complaints about this adv event, not enough prior notice given, people being locked in the, in the homes, not being able to get to church, to weddings, to, to, to events. Uh, the whole Kitty Minster Football League programme was closed down on Sunday. Well, it's a which, big thing for you, that is. It's a big thing for me because I run a Sunday morning football team. Yeah. Uh, we'll maybe talk about that later. Uh, so Please there's don't. <laughs> there was a lot of inconvenience uh, to residents uh, through parts of the borough. However, having said that, this was an event which raised many thousands for local charities. It was a huge event, 15,000 cyclists on a 100-mile yeah. bike ride. Uh, there are bound to be teething problems when you have an event of this size. I think what's important is what's gone wrong we need to look at and assess and make sure that if we do this next year, that we actually get it right and we don't have those same, same mistakes. But there will be problems when you have an event of this size when you first put that event on. Important key as leaders of the council is to make sure that what we've done right, we do better, and what we didn't get right this year, we actually make sure we don't do the same mistakes next year. And if that means communicating better with local residents, providing routes where they can actually go, still go about their daily business, then that's what we have to do. Fine. Uh, this is the one that we thought might come in, mm -hmm. about the Hippodrome. Okay. The hip Hippodrome in Dudley is a great asset to Dudley. What is going on with it now, <laughs> and is there any progress? Well, I would say that you know, I think that question is, is wrong. The, the Hippodrome is not currently an asset to Dudley, and it hasn't been for many years because it's been closed. It ended its days as a theatre way, way back, before, any, before our time. It was then the bingo hall, and then it was closed, and it's been closed ever since. Could it be an asset to the borough? Possibly, if the right investment is found to invest in the building and to have a good business plan where we can get acts, quality acts, to come and perform there. So, yes, it could be an asset, but I think it's misleading to say it's an asset to Dudley. Currently, it's not. Currently, it looks an eyesore. Yes, it does. Uh, But that's not to say it couldn't be an asset in the future. Now, there are meetings currently going ahead to decide the future of the Hippodrome. I know that the council officers and council leaders are in discussions with the key players in the project to save the Hippodrome and bring it back into use. Uh, so I think we await to see whether the group have met the conditions that they themselves outlined that they would be happy to work to. If they have, then we can move on to the next stage. If they haven't, then obviously there is a discussion to be had. But out, um, at the end of the day, the decision will be made by the full council, not by you and me. No, the, well, that's it, right. It'll be in, front, right. in this chamber, that's and right. the 72 councils and will vote on it. My style is very much to go with the flow of democracy, and if something feels right, the majority of members will support it. If it doesn't, they won't. But so, that should be down to the... We haven't always done things right in Dudley before. You've had executive decisions made. It's then gone to full council, yeah. when the process, and it's been agreed at cabinet, then gone to council, the process should be that, particularly on contentious issues, it goes to scrutiny committees. In this instance, it has. The group have been given a certain amount of time to try and get their business plan in order, to get the finances in order, and to satisfy the criteria, again, I stress, that the group themselves agreed to. When all that is said and done, that decision will then come to full council and the 72 elected members will make a uniform decision. Yes. Whereas in the past, 
it's been one or two members or the cabinet have turned that have made that decision. And then sometimes that's gone through and been unpopular or they've had to backtrack. For instance, on, on, on the scrapping the weekly bin collections, charging for green waste, building us, Mick, for you, if he's still listening, building on junction three of the M5, yeah. uh, things like that were agreed at cabinet and then withdrawn at a later stage. I don't think, particularly in days of no overall control, but I just don't think it's good for democracy overall for an executive to make those controversial decisions. Uh, it should be deliberated and consulted on on a wider and scope. And debated, yes. It should be debated in scrutiny, and then if a cabinet's got any sense, they'll listen to what the recommendations are from the scrutiny committees, and then it can go back through cabinet and then to full council. And that's what will happen with the hippodrome. But it'll be an open vote. It it'll be an open vote. There won't be any... And none of our members will be whipped. No, that's, that's the way it should be. A question from Elaine Josephine Morris. Mm -hmm. Why is Netherton Park littered constantly with beer cans, rubbish and broken glass everywhere, especially outside the kiddies' nursery? Also opposite the nursery, the grass is never cut. Weeds sky high, only cut on fun day once a year. Um, a path is hardly cleaned and steps are broken and dangerous. I think that's probably one that we could ask yes. if, our uh, officers to look yeah, at because, if she gives us some yeah. more details. We can certainly have a look. I'm a bit surprised at that because I know that there is an, excuse me, the Netherton uh, Friends of the Park and I think they, they've won award after award for what they've done within that park and with mm. the, 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 uh, the, the uh, nursery. Uh, so I'm a bit surprised about that. So something's clearly gone wrong. Uh, we'll take note of that and get in touch with officers. Because yeah. I know that friends group is very active. It's one of the more active friends groups throughout the borough. Yes. Uh, so clearly something's gone amiss there. So uh, okay. we get in touch with the friends group, get in touch with officers and try and rectify that situation as quickly as possible. Okay, perhaps uh, that'll help. Um, another question from Mr Morgan Civita. Mm -hmm. What are your plans for the children's services and our Dudley Youth Council? Plans are, we have a, have a very able cabinet member for children's services, Councillor Anne Millward, and uh, it's Anne that will lead the steer on children's services and obviously with our youth services too. I think that we've gone through some tough times in children's services in Dudley. Yeah, we have. Uh, under, under the previous administration, uh, to give credit to the previous cabinet member fr from the previous Labour administration, I think Ian Cooper did a hell of a lot of good work. He, he was very transparent. He was very, um, he liked to cooperate with opposition members. And I think because we had that cross-party approach, mm. we were able to rectify a lot of the mistakes very quickly. And really when Ofsted came in, they did criticize the authority. And it doesn't matter who's running the council, if Ofsted come in and criticize you and give you a poor report, then I think it's a damning verdict on all 72 members, not just the controlling group. Yeah. Uh, I think because of that cross-party working, and again, a lot of credit to that, down to Ian Cooper, uh, we were able to bring ourselves back to an acceptable standard. And of course now Ofsted have released their grip on us, which is always a relief, uh, and are now allowing us to set that steer and to raise the standards to where they should be. Certainly I sit on the, on the Children's mm -hmm. Services Improvement Board, uh, along with fellow councillors from all groups. And I think that's doing a wonderful job. And it, it's down to the, the partners that are involved, yeah. the police, mm. the hospitals, the doctors, the CCG, and we're all working together to make things better for the yeah. children. You're, you're the probably borough. better off answering this because you, former uh, cabinet member and former shadow cabinet member for children's services, and as you've said, you're on a lot of these committees where you mm. deal with the issues that crop up on children's yeah. services. Um, Dave Allison. Mm -hmm. Why are there lots of empty shops in Dudley and are you doing to get them occupied? I suppose that should be, what are we doing? Yeah, I think we've already probably dealt with this. There are a lot less empty shops than there were previously. Um, and what, one of the specific things we're doing is trying to get developers uh, to invest in Dudley. One of the first things I've done since taking over the leadership of the council is to set up a business champions group. I want serious uh, developers, serious players who can regenerate this borough. Mm -hmm. All four corners, not just Dudley Town Centre, but Halzo in Stairbridge, Briley Hill too. And we want those people to be sitting around the table telling us why they find it difficult to deal with the authority and do business in Dudley. When we've got rid of those problems, I'm hoping that they want to invest in this borough. And the first couple of meetings have gone ahead and they've been very positive. And we have big developers 
who for the first time in 20 years want to come and spend money within this borough. That's excellent. Uh, now, yeah. that's one of the means that we're doing. Yeah. Uh, that is obviously a more long-term project. On the shorter term, the introduction of one hour and hopefully two hours free car parking. I've spoken to a couple of traders, some in King Swingford, some in Dudley Town Centre. What it's doing to those traders is giving them a bit of confidence. We're doing our bit as an authority. We're taking a hit on the, on the parking charges, but we're hopefully installing some confidence in, mm -hmm. in the retailers. If a retailer, as in any other business, has a degree of confidence, they may well invest in other premises, which will help with the empty shops. They may well invest in taking on additional staff. They may well invest in taking on more lines to sell to customers. Yeah. So it's about installing confidence. It's a small measure that one hour and hopefully two at a later stage. But we're doing our bit with the free car parking. Business rates too. A majority, two-thirds of businesses in Dudley have seen huge reductions in their business rates. And the one-third that have seen an increase, uh, we've tasked officers with applying for a government grant that they've just announced, yeah. which hopefully will take care of the majority of that increase. So hopefully, if we're successful in getting that grant, then the vast majority of Dudley businesses will have seen a reduction, a huge reduction in their business rates. If you add that onto the free car parking, if you add that onto the regeneration we spoke about in great detail earlier, then I think we are doing a lot to try and regenerate the town centre yep. and get rid of this problem where we have lots of empty shops. Okay, Wendy Morris. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this is an interesting one. Yeah. Um, you said, that's you Patrick, a million would go into the... Okay. Where is that money coming from and how much will filter down to the people who actually need it? And how much will be taken in admin fees and wages? Okay, very, very easily. Uh, although we have, we, I, believe, I believe, we're just coming out of the age of austerity. However, even during those very difficult times, there was always pots of money that government had. But they would ring fence it for particular pots, yeah. like adult social care. Well, betide any council that doesn't spend it on what it's allocated for, because they will take it away mm -hmm. as quickly as they give it. Oh yes, this this seven million pounds plus is allocated to adult social care. It cannot be spent on anything else. It won't go on admin. It will be spent on adult social care. The finer details—they've all been, uh, I think, deliberated at cabinet, where the cabinet member presented a report. And that detail of where that money will be spent is in that cabinet report. Yep. I believe that's on the council's website, so Wendy could access that. If, if not, then if she messages us, then what I'll do, I'll get a printed report and make sure it gets posted to That's them. good. I mean, we have been accused in the past of, of using some of it to cut the grass, would you believe? Yeah, but that, that can't but that, happen in this happen. case. It cannot happen. It's, it's uh, definitely going to be for adults. That's right. Yeah. And, and the threat is there, from again, from government, that if we don't hit the targets and we don't uh, do the good thing that we want to do with this £7 million, then the threat is there that in the second year it could be taken away. Now, I've just signed a letter, uh, along with other council leaders, uh, Labour and Conservative council leaders, saying that, look, if, if, if we're close to achieving all our targets, it would be detrimental to remove that second year of funding. Uh, so there's cross-party support there. If councils have abused that money and spent it on things they shouldn't have done, as Wendy is uh, alluding to, then quite rightly they should lose that funding. But Dudley is one of the authorities, along with the others, who are working very hard to try and, and resolve that issue that we have with how we treat our elderly people. Great. Um, ben Campbell, mm -hmm. why are all our local youth centres closed and boarded up when children of Dudley are already at the loose end for things to do and just end up roaming the streets? I think, first of all, this is an age-old problem uh, where people say kids have nothing to do, they have nowhere to go. Uh, first of all, I don't believe that. I think there are lots of leisure activities that our youngsters do get involved in. There are drama groups, amateur dramatic groups, there are football clubs. Stairbridge District and Youth League has probably 2,000 kids on its books that play for different clubs. You look more locally in Dudley, like Withymore, Colts, Worsley Wasps, Cuford Eagles, they have hundreds of kids on their books. Yes, there, are, there are gymnastic clubs, there are after-school clubs, there are still some youth centres open, uh, but I think councils in the past have had to make difficult decisions. There was a youth centre closed in my ward. Uh, I had the luxury of having two 
youth centres. So the decision was made uh, to close one under the previous administration. Had we been running the council, we would have probably still closed one of those two facilities. Yeah. So, as I said, the difficult decisions to be made, whoever is running the authority. I think what is important is when you can afford, re reinvest back into the community. Uh, there is a potential to possibly provide some additional youth service in King Springford with a development that is in its very uh, embryonic stages. Mm -hmm. So it would be wrong to say anymore at this stage, because it may not happen, but the, the idea is there that that, that seed of thought has been planted with officers. So if they can go away and do the, do the maths and do the figures, and if it works, then we may well have something to replace that old youth centre. Uh, but as, as, as regards the, the question of where, where do kids go, what do they do with their pastime, a, a lot of children, like myself, we had youth centres in our day. We had an abundance of youth centres. Did I ever attend one? No, I didn't. I was one of those kids that walked the streets because that's what a lot of children prefer to do. What we have to try and do is find activities for them to yeah. engage in. And that may not be going into a building and being told that you can do this or you can do that. A lot of kids don't want to do that these days. So I think what we have to do with our youth services really bring it up to a modern day um, edge so that we're providing something for them, but we're not shepherding them into a room where we say, well, we're going to do this, going to do that. Because uh, they, they, they're grown up way beyond the years these days. And they simply don't want to do that. No, I, and I think some of the time that the council are, are involved in this is not the right way to go. Mm. Um, partners are probably better at doing it. Yeah. In Howe's Own, we have uh, Life Central Church, mm -hmm. used to be the Zion Church. Yes. And they, on a Friday night, they run a youth club there. Um, it's not called a youth club these days. You can't call things like youth club. Uh, and they have over 200 kids there That's fantastic. on a Friday night. And they and face trust in the same, yeah. same organisation. They do things for the children all over the borough. Who was it who asked that question? Um, that was Ben. So an answer Ben's specific point, what we can do in the future is possibly work with organisations like the church, like other voluntary organisations. Yeah. Uh, th th they can do these things better than us and probably more efficient. Yes. And I think it's about identifying the good, good practice and the good establishments, establishments the good organisations that offer that service for youngsters, mm -hmm. that give them some activities to do. And if they can do it better and cheaper than the council, then I have no problem in looking at our, the way we fund that, that youth service. Uh, I mean, you've got Dudley Performing Arts, yes. who at one point were very reliant on the local authority. Uh, over a number of years, that's changed. They're now self-funding, yep. and they still provide that service where youngsters can go it's and learn to play a musical too. instrument. If we can adopt that process where organisations, you say, like the church, come in and do it for us, then we're still providing that service. It's just not run by the authority. And we may be able to reach more kids that way than just providing an old building with a youth worker, which I think is the old-fashioned way of doing it. It is the old-fashioned way. Uh, and, of course, old buildings like that take money to, to keep yeah. up. And, and, and instead of spending it on the kids, we're spending it on repairing roofs, etc. Yes, and other things. we do. Um, Emma McConnell, mm -hmm. any chance of a splash park area being built in Netherton Park? I have no idea, is the honest answer. I have no idea what, what that would entail, and uh, probably not, I would say. But, uh, well, certainly if when we've looked at uh, muggers, multi-user mm, games areas, yeah. they, you're talking about £120,000 to put it in. Sure. Now, splash area, you've got, obviously got to connect it up to water mm. and all sorts. Yeah. They just put one in... Um, Mary Stevens Park in Stourbridge, yes. which has gone down well. Obviously, it doesn't get used in the winter. In fact, I was in there on Saturday or Sunday of this week, just gone, and it's closed for the mm -hmm. season. So, you know, mm. it's good if the sun's shining. Yes. Unfortunately, this year, we've not had much of that. So. Um, with the recent proposal of former Mary Hill owner to build a new car park next to Russell's Hall Hospital... Mm -hmm as a low-cost car park alternative to the present one, is this good or bad? I think it's very good. Um, <clears throat> here you have local businessmen, and he is a local businessman, born and bred in Briley Hill, wanting to do something for the community. Uh, and I, I think it should be encouraged. It's at its very early stages. There are a lot of hurdles to overcome before we can actually do that. 
and it may not happen because there are hurdles, there are other partners to consider. Uh, we have to get them around the table. Yeah. I'm encouraging those meetings so that if we can get agreement around the table, then hopefully, touch wood, this could happen. But I would ever on the side of caution that it is very early days, but I think the principle is one that I support. It's a good idea, yeah. It is a very good idea. Uh, this one is from Chris Blake. Mm -hmm. A lot of money has been spent on investing in Dudley to regenerate the town centres, which is a positive step. But do the council have any plans to invest in local centres, such as Quarry Bank? Um, issues with traffic and severance are a long-standing issue in that area due to the congestion pressures around Merry Hill. And he actually find, signs off with thanks, Patrick. So he obviously <laughs> hopes you're going to Thank do you, something Chris. for him. Um, I, th I think... I mean, it was with David Sparks, the former uh, leader of the council, who, uh, what he doesn't know about local government isn't worth knowing. But I think David Sparks, I think, criticised the road layout around Quarry Bank. Mm. Uh, it is an absolute nightmare if you're a local and you're trying to get from A to B and you have to go through Merry Hill. It, 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 it's a nightmare. Uh, that probably needs looking at. Uh, what I would say is, because it's so close to the Merry Hill Centre, uh, in the new owners in Merry Hill into, uh, unlike the previous owners, we have a really positive working relationship with them. They do care about their local community. Yes, uh, so do. I think if there's, yeah. if there's any scope for trying to uh, improve the lot of people who live around Quarry Bank and have to get from A to B and bypass Merry Hill, then I think uh, there is some hope there because they, they do want to engage with the community. They do a lot within uh, Netherton, for example, in the woodlands there. They have programs there where they have volunteers and they provide the expertise and the tools to get rid of weeds, to clear pathways so that the woodlands are brought more into mm. use. So they do a lot of good practical community work like that uh, and they really do want to invest in the Merry Hill Centre. And, and it's not just about providing new retail units and new no, cinemas. No. It's also about the infrastructure on how we get there and how we get out. And yes. the quicker we can get in there, the quicker we can get out, then that makes it better for the people who live around Merry Hill. Uh, I've lived in uh, Quarry Bank for 22 mm. years, so I know the area fairly well. I live just off Park Road there. Uh, and at, at certain times, bank holidays in particular, it was quicker to walk yeah. from Merry Hill back home than to try and drive a car. Yeah, not so it, it can be really snarled up. Mm -hmm. But it's a very useful thing to be in the area. Mm. Um, it brings a lot of uh, people into our area. Uh, but we've got to make certain that they're not all stuck on the car no, park. Absolutely. No. Um, business Champions Group. Yep. You recently set this up, Patrick. Yes. Um, and I know you've got a lot of big businesses involved in mm -hmm. that. Can you tell us a bit about that? Well, it's, 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 it's the big businesses, the developers, but it's also getting some, uh, and it's a mixture. They are developers of shopping centres, of high streets, but there are small business people there as well. There's one business that uh, does high-tech uh, testing on engineered parts for the aerospace industry. Oh, yeah. Their complaint is that they cannot find large enough premises to relocate. So it's important to get those people around the table. So I don't want them relocating to Sandwell, Wolverhampton, further afield. No, no. I want them relocating, hopefully with the Enterprise Zone at Riley Hill or yeah. somewhere else in Dudley, uh, where we get their business rates, we get local people employed by them. Yep. Uh, what we don't want is people relocating to other parts of the country. Uh, so I think it's important to find out just what issues local businesses have. Now, this business champions, it it's also includes... Uh, Lowell Williams, the uh, principal of Dudley College, yeah. because Lowell, people like Lowell, uh, people like Andrew Lovett at the Black Country Museum, both those gentlemen are leaders in their field, in their communities. They certainly are. One has changed the skyline in Dudley with the ever-expanding Dudley College. Yes, great uh, as well. One has taken a museum, which, let's be honest, if it continued to be running the way that it was, it would probably be shut now. But Andrew has taken the Black Country Museum so that he's recognised worldwide. Yes. Uh, and he's got exciting plans for the future, working in conjunction with the college and the zoo. Uh, and the canal. And the canal. And we've got mm. those people involved in the business champions group. Because it's not, it's not just about big business, it's about small business, medium size. 
It's about our tourist and leisure attractions. It's about getting all these people around the table so they all know what the big projects are. So the college will know that we're doing work on the metro. Uh, they have students that could possibly assist in that. Uh, it's new technology. We have the very light rail project at Castle Hill. Uh, the college has a big involvement in that. So it's about trying to work with as many partners who can influence and actually change things and make things happen. What I don't want it to be is a talking shop where we just pat each other on the back and look at the agenda next time it comes around. What I want is for us to actually achieve things, do things. So it's a meeting of doers and all the people invited to that business champions group have a track record of doing things. And I think that's yeah. crucial. I think that it's nice to have partners like that. Oh, it is. That Absolutely. know what they're talking about. Mm. Uh, and they, they work well. And you've got to bring in the tourist parts of this mm. borough, which are extremely unique. Yes. There isn't anything like them altogether in one spot. Um, it's the last few weeks for council tax reduction scheme. Yes. Um, what can you tell us about that? Anything? Again, there is a consultation process currently underway uh, as to whether we should reduce or retain at the same level the council tax reduction scheme that's currently in place. A lot of councils have reduced the amount of um, exempts, exemptionness that uh, residents can get on their council tax. This is mainly people on, on, on benefits. Uh, one of the good things from this consultation process is we are proposing that people who have been in uh, long-term care that turn from children to adults, they quite often get left behind. So once they turn 18 or 21, uh, they have to pay their full council tax. Yes, they do. Yep. Under our proposals in the consultation document, we're proposing that they are exempt, so they get the full uh, council tax reduction scheme allowance, yes. uh, whereas currently they wouldn't. So it's a, it's a small cost to the council, but I think it's important to help those that have been in long-term care as they come out and reach adulthood. It's a, it's a scary world out there. And it's a little bit of help, and I think it's uh, well worth investing in them. It's only a small bit of help. But, uh, but it could be very much welcome. Yeah, and um, we are, uh, as counsellors, we are regarded as corporate parents for mm. these children. And it's only something that you would be doing for your own child. That's right. So we really need to be doing something for them, anything we can, to, um, to sort of improve their lot, to make life a little bit easier for them. New homes across the borough... Mm -hmm. Um, the major schemes uh, will see sort of a big investment. Can you come up with anything to encourage people who are looking for a new home? I think the, the authority has taken the stance again on, on, under both administrations quite recently that we, we would like to set up a almost arm's length organisation where we invest in building new homes. Yeah. Whether that's an arm's length organisation, whether it's retained within the control, full control of the council, but we do want to start building homes. Councils haven't done that for a long time, but if we can build them, get planning permission on land that the council owns, if we can, rather than what we used to do, which was sell the land, then the developer builds the houses, takes all the profit. If we can get planning permission on that land, build the houses, sell some, retain some to replenish our housing stock, then we maximise the potential there to make a revenue stream for the local authority. And as authorities move forward, instead of relying on central governments, and all central governments look to cut council funding, I don't care what political party they are, they all do. And if governments could run themselves as efficiently as most councils can, then we wouldn't, the country would not be in the mess that it is. Yes. Because we are, councils are extremely efficient at trying to cut their cloth accordingly, regardless of who's running them. Uh, governments aren't. Uh, they're not as good as us anyway. However, if we can create those revenue streams, and the house building projects we've got are one, of, one such revenue stream, then we become less reliant on central government. And that has to be a good thing when we're creating our own cash yeah. flows. Uh, the, the, the other thing on this is that uh, Dudley uh, is well ahead of the game when it comes to providing new homes. And that's a mixture of ourselves building them and the private sector. And um, we have a good track record. I think on average our target is around 1,000 new homes in the borough a year. 
uh, we're on track to achieve that and we are yeah. well ahead of the national game. We punch well above our weight as an authority compared to the rest of the West Midlands and the rest of the country further afield. So we've got, I think, a lot to be proud of in the borough when it comes to building new homes. Building new council homes and social housing is a new thing for the authority. Uh, but I think uh, if, if that can work and we can bring some money back into the, into the council to, again, invest in more social housing, then that, ha again, has to be a good thing. So I think eventually, uh, to answer the gentleman's question, yes, eventually we will be providing sufficient homes that hopefully deal with the problem that we've got with social housing as it stands. Good. Uh, and, of course, Mick, you'll be pleased to know that we're looking for brownfield sites, <laughs> Absolutely, not Greenbelt. Mick. I'm sure you'll be waiting us Actually, for us I, to I, say I, that. I have arranged to meet Mick uh, very shortly. Yep. It's in the diary, so hopefully I can try and allay some of Mick's fears face-to-face, -face, which is far better than having email exchanges. What, what, because he sends us emails four no, or no, five no, times no. I, a day? No, no, no. I just, I just <laughs> feel to talk to someone face-to-face, -face, yes. uh, you can be more transparent and honest right. than you can behind a letter. Well, I think email. perhaps you'll then see the honesty in, in it rather than and getting it sort of second-hand. Mm -hmm. Guy Holness, um, we've covered again a little bit of this. What yes. are you doing about embracing creativity in the Dudley town? Do you have any plans to visually improve the town looks? I personally think it's dull, boring, and doesn't <laughs> offer anything creatively stimulating. Are you willing to think and step outside of the box to regenerate Dudley? I think I've already spoken about the regeneration plan, so time is of the essence, so I'm not going to go over old ground. Um, thinking outside the box, I had a meeting with a, a young gentleman whose name I can't remember some time ago, and it was, I think it was Central News, and this is about to be aired, I think, in October, and what the, the, this gentleman has uh, shop premises in, in, in uh, the High Street in Dudley. Yeah. And uh, what he does, he does street art. And oh, he's yeah. getting talented young people to express themselves and they ask for shop fronts that are closed, where, whether they can put art on those yep. shop fronts. Uh, and I've seen some of the work, and it is fantastic. And it's not graffiti, it's is not it? not graffiti. It's proper art. But they're asking yeah. for permission, and, and where we can, I'd like to work with him. I think he's... That's ideal. It, it, that is thinking outside the box. Yeah. To make things look a little bit better. Um, now, I think it does air on Central News in October. I'm being told, yes. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that, and I'd yeah. very much like to meet up with the young man and uh, try and encourage him all I can. Certainly in some areas of the borough we've already got street yeah. art, uh, but we've also got areas which have been blighted by graffiti, yeah. which isn't art, it's just scribble. Mm -hmm. And it costs us a lot of money to take down. Uh, but I'm, I can think of an area in Stourbridge on the side of a building that's been there ten years now, mm -hmm. and it's great art, yeah. really good. You know, it's, it's a different aspect, but I think it's, it's, it's well worth considering. And as the gentleman said, to think outside the box. Yeah. But that, to just close it, I think there's a lot of uh, good things to talk about with Dudley, with regeneration. There's an lot, awful lot of yes. money coming in, probably £500 million in total throughout the borough in regenerational projects. Uh, what we need to do is stop talking about it, and get the bulldozers in, get the shrivels in the ground and get, the, get these buildings built, I get totally the agree. metro to connect Dudley up to the rest of the world. And uh, let's, let's just get on with the job. I hope people have found this interesting and uh, yeah. the right way to go, because mm -hmm. I'm quite willing to come back and, and do it again. We're happy to do it as often as people Perhaps we could do it in a pub. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps. Uh, but I think being told that we need to look at wrapping this up now, I hope you've found this as useful as we have. We've had some useful discussions about a lot of subjects. Any questions that we've not managed to answer yeah. in the time or those that may come in over the next few minutes, We'll get back to you as quickly as we can. In the meantime, thank you all for taking the time to have your say and share some of your ideas and concerns with us. Thank you.